Hello everybody, Vaughny here and welcome to another OBS Studio tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to turn your mic from sounding like this to this. I think you can agree it sounds 1000% better. So let's stop mucking about and let's get into it. Ah, oh, okay. Before I start today's video, uh, thanks for everyone subscribing so far. The channel's doing really well. And if you haven't yet, what the hell are you doing? Subscribe right now, click the notification bell, make sure you follow me on my socials, scroll down, they're all down below, links below, my Twitter, my Discord, my Instagram. Click or tap all the links down below before you start this video. And if you are enjoying my content, uh, hit that like button as well. It really helps out the channel. Right, let's crack on. Straight off the bat, you don't need a really expensive setup to get high quality audio. There's things you can do to make your audio quality sound a thousand times better. Straight off the bat, let's talk about things you can do right now without any settings, without any tweaks that can already get you off to a great start. First and foremost, project your voice. Now you don't need to shout or scream, you just need to project your voice in a way where you know you can actually be heard. So things like audio control, um, when we add compression, which is something I'll be talking about later, that's gonna help out with that. Another rule of thumb for me is make sure your microphone is a fist about a fist away from your mouth. It's a good rule of thumb to start off with. That's how I measure it anyway, about a fist. Another thing is think about what's around you and what is making noise. Do you have a PC that's on your desk? I highly recommend you put your PC, if you can, below you by your side so you don't get that fan noise, any kind of noise uh, when your you know CPU or your graphics card ramps up just to ensure it's not being picked up by the mic. Another thing to think about is a fan. Now, I know a lot of you have fans. I have a fan. Make sure it's not too loud or you know maybe you don't have it on the highest setting or something like that just things to think about what is going on around you again something like a noise gate which i will be showing you later is going to help a lot with this another thing is a pop filter as you can see on my microphone i have a pop filter they're really cheap to pick up from amazon and what a pop filter does it filters out any of those harsh p's s's t's so it just filters those out so it's not harsh for the ears now we got that out of the way let's talk about microphones i have actually used in the past now i used to use this short sv100 this is what's known as a dynamic microphone Phone. This is great for cutting any background audio noise out. There's a reason why singers use this on stage. It's so they can sing into the mic and, you know, hardly any background noise is picked up like the drums, guitar, etc., like that. Now this thing is great for cutting out background sounds, but one of its downfalls is you have to get really close to it or ramp up the volume if you want to be quite far away. And normally it tends to be plugged into a mixer. I don't think you can get these in USB form. Hold on. USB dynamic microphone. Hmm, I don't think you get these in USB form. You know, I could be wrong. Another microphone I've used is this Blue Yeti. It's a fantastic microphone and it's reasonably priced as well. This is what's known as a condenser microphone. It does pick up more background noise. One of the pros of this microphone and like any other condenser microphone is that you can actually be quite far away for it to, uh, you know, pick up sound but you do pick up a fair bit of background noise. But on the back of this one, you actually have a dial which controls the direction of where the microphone actually is being picked up from, which is a great plus on this microphone. And this thing plugs straight into USB, it's plug and play. I do recommend you download the drivers though. Which brings me to my own microphone that I use now, which is the Audio-Technica AT2020. AT2020. Yeah, the Audio Technica AT2020. This microphone is better quality than this one, and for me, this uh, plugs into a mixer. Now, you can get this into USB form, which brings me on to my other point, which is USB mixers. Now, I used a Behringer mixer in the past. This one is a Yamaha MG10XU, which is much higher quality, in my opinion, than the Behringer. It, the build quality is fantastic. And one of the pros of using a mixer is, for me at least anyway, is that you can actually physically turn the dials and you can get better audio control. Now, I understand, you know, it's a bit pricey to start getting a mixer and a microphone, but you don't need a mixer at all. You can just get a straight plug and play USB microphone. Again, this is a little bit more priced than the um, Blue Yeti, but it's worth it in my opinion. And hey, if you've got cash to literally throw a microphone, get the Shure SM7B. Um, I haven't had that microphone yet, but it's literally, I've heard so many good reviews and it's such a dream microphone. One day I will own that microphone. Like I said though, you don't need a mixer. You literally can buy a USB plug and play microphone if you don't have the cash to spend. The settings I'm about to show you 
are going to definitely help you get better audio quality from your microphone. So let's dive into OBS and look at the settings we can use to get that perfect microphone sound. So as you can tell, I've reset my microphone. It doesn't sound as good as it was, but I want to show you guys step by step so you can hear what's actually going on when I apply these effects. Now, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of these effects as I apply them to help you understand what it's actually doing to your sound. So let's go ahead. We've got OBS open right here. Let's start the very base settings. So we go to click settings over here. We go to audio. So now I'm just going to disable. So basically, start off with your desktop audio make sure you choose your you know default audio whether it be the most common is this real tech uh, speakers that which everybody uses i use voice meet and banana voice meet banana is a whole different ball game and i will do a tutorial separately for that so once we've got our desktop audio sorted down here go to the first mic auxiliary and choose your microphone mine is the mgxu here which is my yamaha mixer Yours, again, might be a plug and play USB microphone. Just make sure you have that one selected. Important note, install the goddamn drivers. Right, so let's go ahead and click apply. Then click OK. And as soon as you've done that, you'll see in your audio mix down here, you'll have your microphone all being well and it's turned on and it's working. You could see a signal's coming through here. Now, my signal's quite low. It sits around in the green area. A good area is just below the red here and in the orange is perfect. We're gonna keep looking back at this audio level to get our settings really nailed in. A little tip I'm gonna show you here is so you can hear back what you're actually doing to your sound, right click the microphone mixer bar button here, go to advanced audio properties. Now, for me, this is very important to actually monitor your sound. So go to your microphone over here, mic aux, and click this drop down menu and click monitor only mute output. Now you can turn this on and off because it will be jamming your voice if you're trying to do some tests, but just keep flicking that on and off, going back here, right click, advanced audio properties, make sure you turn monitor off and monitor only. Like I said, there is some delay and it can be really off putting, but this is so you can hear yourself back and apply the settings to make sure it sounds good. So once you've done that and you can hear yourself in your headphones, Let's go ahead and put on some audio effects. So again, let's right click this mic slash aux here, go to filters, which brings up our filter box here. Now, first things first, we're gonna add some audio compression. Now, a brief explanation of what compression does, it actually smooths out the waveform of your audio, essentially. So if you've got things that are too high, it brings those down. If you've got things that are sounding too quiet, too low, it actually brings those up to make it a more even sound. That's audio compression in a nutshell, but it's much more complicated and convoluted than that. Anyway, let's add a compressor. So right click anywhere in this gray area, click add, or click the plus button down here, does the same thing. Click plus, compressor, leave it named as compressor, click okay. Rule of thumb is ratio for vocals, three to one is a good starting point. I'm not gonna to touch the ratio, I'm gonna leave it at three to one. The ratio in compression is very complicated, I'm not even gonna dive into that. Now the threshold, I am gonna look at my bar down here and I'm well over 30, minus 30 decibels. So I'm gonna tell the compressor to kick in at around minus 30, which is a good point for me. The attack is the amount of time it takes for the compressor to kick in. Now attack, I want it one millisecond. I want the compressor kicking in straight away. The release, I like my release around 50. That just means the amount of time it takes the compressor to stop working and release. So now the output gain, what we're gonna do is, is now ramp this up and keep an eye, like I said earlier, on your levels here. So as you ramp it up and start talking, la 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 la. Uh, a good point for me looks like 14 because we're hitting the orange now. We're hitting the orange and staying just below the red. And as you could probably already tell, my voice sounds so much better. Again, like we said, we're bringing those quiet parts louder, we're bringing those louder parts quieter to make the sound more compressed and more even. And it makes it sound a little bit thicker as well, just sounds nicer. Again, like I said earlier, when you are projecting your voice, even when you whisper, it kind of makes it the same level. Bear in mind, you'll be also picking things up in the background a little bit more. This is where we add a noise gate to help negate that. So a noise gate, what that essentially is, is like it says on the tin, it's a gate that lets noise in at a certain decibel, then closes again when it gets below that decibel range. So as you can see, my audio mixer, even when I'm not talking, still picking up lots of background sound. So, we're gonna add a gate. So again, uh, the right click or the plus button down here below, 
And let's add a noise gate. Leave it as noise gate. Boom. Now, as you can see, I've applied the noise gate and already take a look at the audio mixer. See how it dips to nothing? So now we're going to tweak these settings to get it sounding how I want it to sound and closing it off where I want it to close off. So if I continue talking right now, I am well above minus 20 decibels. A safe option for me for the open threshold, remember the open threshold is when you open the gates. So minus 20 decibels is good for me. Your mileage may vary. A rule of thumb as well for the close threshold, keep this minus five or minus 10 within those ranges and keep sliding those two sliders together as such. But always keep that close threshold as a rule of thumb, minus five or minus 10 below what your open threshold is. So I'm gonna stick with minus 20, minus 30. Now, if I was to move this open threshold up, you will see that it cuts out my voice completely. So you've got to get this right. So it's very important you have a play with these settings. Again, just a quick reminder, make sure you're monitoring this by right clicking advanced audio properties and making sure you're monitoring your output so you can get a good idea of how your audio sounds. Now let's move on to the attack time. Now I want the attack time to be really quick on my noise gate. Now remember guys, what this is essentially doing it now is it gets rid of any background noise that is below these decibels. I'm clicking my keyboard there. And if I tap really hard, obviously you're going to hear it, but it gets rid of any annoying backgrounds. Now you're not going to negate every single background noise that's going to happen. Obviously when that gate's open, you're going to hear the fan. You're going to hear whatever you have going on in the background. There is software out there like Nvidia's voice, which actually digitally gets rid of that sound, but it can make your voice sound a bit like you're talking underwater. Quite impressive software though. The attack time, I want it to be quick. So I'll put it on 10 milliseconds. I want this noise gate to kick in instantly now this is all personal preference some people like a really quick hold time so what hold time means is how long the audio will stay there before it cuts off same with the release time if we set these to 10 watch see how my audio cuts out very quickly personally i don't like my audio cutting out too quickly but you know lots of people do i found the right sentence for me is 500 i like kind of half a second of hold time and a release time of about 100 milliseconds so it has like a smooth fade out kind of thing again play around with your settings find out what sounds good for you again your mileage may vary and for me that is pretty much perfect i like the way it sounds it makes your voice sound fuller it essentially gets rid of any background noise while you're not talking and i think audio quality for me comes over visual quality because there's nothing more annoying than someone being too quiet or too loud or just hearing random noises in the background. It can really put people off your content and your streams. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope this helped you out. And if it did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for any notifications on my new videos coming out. Also, as always, links are down below for my socials. Hit me up in there. Give me a message on Twitter, Discord, Instagram if you feel like you want to ask me any questions, need any help. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.